afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Rana Higgins. I am one of the surgeons here at Medical College of Wisconsin in the Department of Minimally Invasive and General and Bariatric Surgery. Um, welcome to our weekly video session on programs and innovations in the Department of Surgery here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I am joined here by one of my partners, Dr. Matthew Goldblatt. Uh, Dr. Goldblatt did quite extensive medical training here in Wisconsin. Um, he then did his fellowship training in advanced minimally invasive surgery at The Ohio State University. He then went on to serve in the Air Force for several years and then has been back here at the Medical College of Wisconsin for the past eight years, where he is one of our associate professors in surgery. He is currently the General Surgery Residency Program Director and most significantly related to this video series, he's the director of the Condon Hernia Institute. So today we're gonna to talk a bit about hernias uh, from a hernia expert and learn a little bit, bit more. So Dr. Goldblatt, why don't you tell us a little bit about what types of hernias there are? So um, when most people think of hernias, they usually think of what we commonly call inguinal hernias or hernias in the groin. Um, those occur most commonly in men. Um, although it's not unheard of to have them in women, it's about uh, 30 times more likely in men, but uh, certainly it does occur in women. Um, there are oftentimes people are born with them and those are usually fixed when they are children. And then uh, most of the ones that I fix are ones that um, are come up later in life, either through activity or some other type of straining um, and they get a hernia in the groin. The, other most common type of hernia is what's called an umbilical hernia, which is um, at the, what we call an umbilicus or the belly button for most people. Um, and then the, the next most common types of hernias are ones that occur because of prior surgeries. So if you've had a surgery in your abdomen, um, there's up to about a 25% chance that that incision that they went through could turn into a hernia. Um, so you mentioned that um different types of people, groups of people can get hernias. And you said, can only men get hernias? It is possible for women to get hernias. And what are some of the risk factors? So certainly for the incisional hernias, uh, that doesn't have a male-female uh, bias. But uh, for the inguinal hernias, they're certainly about 30 times more common in men. Um, some of the risk factors for all types of hernias include, uh, the biggest one is diabetes, uh, smoking, and, um, and, and obesity, so that was not one, that was three, but the sure. biggest three, three <laughs> things um, have, are those sort of big risk factors, which um, in this day and age tend to be risk factors for many diseases, but we certainly know um, that between this, the obesity and smoking, that puts you at a great risk for developing a hernia, particularly after um, mm -hmm. an operation in the abdomen. Now, is there anything people can do to help their hernia go away, get smaller, get better? Um, anything that people can do to avoid having a surgery, for example? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. A lot of times, you know, we think of hernias, a simple analogy has to do with like a tire and, um, and a hole in the tire. So mm -hmm. once you have a hole in the tire, you, you, it doesn't fix itself. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing that we can do from an exercise. You can't do crunches to make your hernia go away. So, um, so essentially the only way to make the hernia go away is to go in there and surgically bring the edges back together. So um, what a hernia is, is a, an actual defect in the abdominal wall or the, the muscle and tendons that, that um, not only are our core muscle strength, but also keep all of our intestines and uh, other parts of our uh, inner abdomen inside. Sure, that's, that's great. So if somebody decided they have a hernia and they wanna come see you to talk about that, what are kind of the steps? What are some of the expectations? going into the visit with you? So um, we usually ask, you know, uh, obviously a thorough, you know, surgical history because we want to try to figure out if you've had, um, you know, what surgeries you've had and what may have led to particularly what we call an incisional hernia. Um, a lot of it has to do with your activity, what type of job you have. We try to figure out not only what we can do to maximize your experience before you have surgery, but we also want to make sure that we can get you back to work. Our goal would be to get you back to as close to full activity as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly with a first time hernia, that would be our, our initial expectation, that you would be able to get back to work, get back to full activity um, once you've healed. And usually that healing time is, 
anywhere between four to eight weeks. But uh, you know, give us a little bit of time to get you back together, and then we we'll have you playing golf and and back to work as soon as we can. Yeah. So that leads to my next question: What are some of the limitations or restrictions that people have after hernia surgery? Are they able to exercise and lift and do things regularly, or do they have to forever kind of watch what they're doing? So. First time hernias, I would say absolutely let's, you know, we have a couple of weeks in the beginning where we don't want you lifting more than 10 pounds, then we bump that up to 20 pounds, and usually after somewhere between four to six weeks, we can usually get, get you back to full activity. Um, if you have a job that's very strenuous and you have to lift a lot of weights, we may actually have you go through some physical therapy before you go back. But um, ideally, we'd have you at full activity, back to work um, with a greater than 90% expectation that you wouldn't get a hernia again and we, we've fixed it once and for all. The problem comes in uh, more so when people have had multiple hernia operations and now we're dealing with their third and fourth attempt at this. And unfortunately, every time you fix a hernia, the chance of it staying fixed actually goes down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in patients who have had multiple hernias and we've, we finally feel like we've finally gotten it fixed, we would probably want to have them avoid some of those strenuous activities that may lead to the hernia coming back. So why come to MCW for surgery? What, uh, what advantages are there here at the Condon Hernia Institute for patients to have their surgery? Well, like, much, like many things in medicine, um, we tend to specialize in things here. So um, that's fixing hernias is what I spend about 80 to 90 percent of my time doing. So. Um, I tend to focus on it. Um, the colleagues that I have here, um, yourself included, <laughs> tend to do research on um, hernia repairs. Um, we go to conferences specifically just uh, to study for different, different types of hernias and how best to fix them. And when you do something over and over again, you get, you get good at it and you get experienced at it and you, you've seen all the different types of things, or at least you think you've seen many of the different types of things that can come up during a procedure. And so, um, you know, if I can, if we can take care of the most complex hernias, then we can probably take care of your relatively straightforward hernia. And for many patients, their one and only hernia is probably a pretty big deal, and it may not be as the biggest hernia we've ever, we've ever seen, but that's okay, because to them, that's their only hernia, and we want to make sure we fix it right the first time. And the best time to get a hernia fixed is to do it right the first time. Well, thank you, Dr. Goldblatt, for joining us today. I hope all of you learned quite a bit more about hernias. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, and stay tuned next week for our next video session with the Department of Surgery.